Hello, fabulous Capricorn. Welcome to your horoscope for the month of January 2016, Love Focus. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here and a big happy new year to everybody out there. In the context of love, I'm actually going to take you just a little bit back before the year began, before the month began. We had a full moon, very romantic, very idealistic, taking place in your opposite sign. Well, I remember telling you at that time to take advantage of it. And yes, that is the energy you're carrying into this month. But in a lot of ways, the focus is going to be very much on you at this time, especially as the month begins and in the early part of the month, and especially where it comes to matters of heart. And there are a few reasons for this. One is Venus is moving through the sign just before yours through much of the month. And so as we're starting this month, Venus moves into the sign before yours. And that is essentially a place, a part of the sky that is very quiet. It's very behind the scenes. It's, it's a place where you don't really want people to see what it is that you're doing. And sometimes you're not even aware what you're doing or where you're going or why you're feeling what you're feeling. Um, this is the goddess of love as well. So sometimes we make choices that, especially in this part of the sky, might not be the most empowering best for us, but this does also have some positive implications. And part of that is to hold something sacred a little bit close before you share it. And also it's about readying yourself, preparing yourself, preparing an energy, like sort of a shift in energy so that you can, once Venus will move into your sign, be open to, be available to even more love. While Venus is moving through this part of the sky, she is particularly active. And one of the things that she's going to do is meet your ruling planet, meet Saturn in the sky in the early part of the month. And what is also happening though, and what's really fascinating here is that for you in particular, you have got Mercury moving through your sign, retro in your sign, direct in your sign this particular month. And really, as we get to the later part of the month, Mercury is just kind of hovering over Pluto. And this is magnifying this energy, magnifying the energy of the past, of the present, of intensity, of emotion, of finally being able to give words to what it is that you feel, and of uh, some very provocative conversations, <laughs> um, but also some very valuable insights that people let you know, and in some ways, indirectly. In some ways, as you listen to them talk, you'll understand their intentions a lot more based on what they are not saying. It's like you can see through any kind of illusion and get to the truth of a matter. And it is also possible, I'm going to put this out there, it is possible for some of you, a small percentage of you, you might have a certain object of desire uh, that you really are dwelling on, <laughs> let's put it that way. Uh, just energetically and in your mind for a little while there, they might be the only thing you can think about. It, it'll come, that energy will go as well. So let's take it one at a time. If you are in an established bond, um, it's going to be very hard to hold back your feelings. It's going to be very hard not to talk about certain things. And if there have been any hurts, this is going to be a time when um, you are sharing that and you are explaining that and you are wanting to delve into that. But also with this energy, look, this is Pluto and Pluto is the underworld. Pluto is what you consciously hide and keep hidden. It is also the taboo and that regardless of your relationship status might be on your mind, might be something that you're thinking about, might be something that you are considering exploring. Now, do keep in mind, Mercury is the internet, right? Rules the internet. Like, it was the domain of Uranus, but the more it becomes part of our daily lives, part of our, you know, sort of daily routines, the more the internet becomes the domain of Mercury. 
because Uranus is about the next thing. A little astrology lesson there. Uranus is about the next, you know, the future, uh, the way that we're connecting, the, the digital revolutions and airwaves and the next technologies. And Mercury is about what's already here and being fully utilized. So Mercury has that internet implication, messages, text messages, and then there's Pluto, right? Which is walking that line, you know, wanting to be a little naughty even perhaps. So you want to be mindful of this based on your own unique circumstances and how it is that you choose to manifest this energy. There are ways to manifest it in ways that are empowering and ways that um, maybe might not feel so good to you. So it really does depend on the light of your own circumstances. Mercury is retro through a lot of this time. We'll station, you know, we'll stand still and go direct hovering over Pluto, as I said. And so this does suggest that some of the choices that you make, I mean, it really just might be like experimenting or choices that you make is just really so that you get that experience. But, you know, once things are back on track, you really are thinking in a whole other way. So you might surprise yourself by your willingness or by the things that you want to talk about with other people. Now, this can be really good if also like one conscious, healthy way to use this energy um, is to see somebody, a therapist, right? To really delve into what's going on and what it is that desires to change in your life and in your love life in particular. So if you're in an established bond, um, you might be hoping that your partner is going to walk with you in that direction, or there might be a part of you that you want to just, you know, explore a little bit on your own, um, and keep it quiet. If you are getting to know someone, this energy becomes very different. Um, if you're getting to know someone, I think that this is going to be like the revealing of their secrets you finding out stuff or you knowing things about them and they don't realize that you know. Very possible under this particular sky. So whether it's you like sort of asking questions or doing some sleuthing or someone just like told you, right? <laughs> like it, it becomes very abundantly clear. This person doesn't have to state it right out, but you, you know it on a mind level, you know it, you've been told it or you've read it but also instinctively, chances are that you know some truths that maybe this person isn't ready to share with you. Now, it may or may not be a deal breaker. You do also want to watch, again, Mercury retrograde. You don't always get what you think you're getting, and it is possible that um, something is shared that if a part of you feels like, ugh, that, that doesn't really feel accurate, that doesn't really feel right, um, then you might want to have a look at that as well. But I have a feeling, you know, as I see this, it's almost as if I, I feel that if you're just getting to know somebody, it's like they might share something or they might not share something. They might share something that's been altered a little bit because going into the whole reality of the situation is uh, a little bit too much, is a little bit too intense would make it a little bit too raw for them or would make it feel like um, they would then have to explain a whole bunch of things that they really are not prepared for or don't really want to get into. So it's not that I'm saying that it's necessarily a bad thing, but just know that there might be, if there's some spaces there and you're wondering, okay, I'm seeing some holes here, it might, be okay to allow that or it might be okay to put that off a little bit but i do think that ultimately you are going to find out more than they realize that you know and if you are open to meeting somebody new i mean talk about transformative experiences um this is you know just being very drawn to another person likely communicating with them very strong chance that someone you've already connected with in the past that you had strong feelings for 
uh, would return right about now to sort of reawaken uh, some of that intensity. So if there's been somebody, strong connection was felt, um, but it didn't really pan out, or uh, you know, it, it was a meeting that was especially passionate, but didn't really go anywhere else, this could be a time when that person returns in some way. Whether it's you that makes the effort or them or it's synchronicity, it does look like some type of reunion is taking place as part of you getting a clearer understanding of what was and who this person actually is as part of going forward. What I love about this month for you in the context of love is your bravery. <laughs> you are willing to go there, and I mean there. Um, you are willing to ask yourself some tough questions and also to be very brave and bold in searching for those answers. Uh, you're willing to look at yourself and what you really need or what it is that is just simply what you want right now, what you want to experience. That level of honesty ultimately is healthy. How you move forward with that ultimately is up to you. But there is going to be a strong part of you that wants to get to the truth and wants to explore what maybe you haven't known before. Learn something new. Delve a little deeper in the psyche, in the mind, and otherwise. And that journey, you will find, ultimately leads you back to yourself. It is a sort of a temporary awakening that will bring you back on the other side of Mercury Retrograde to calmer waters.